this is a European warship conducting security operations in this area. If you observe any suspicious or illegal activity or require assistance, call on channel 16 out. It's the early 2000s and Somali pirates operating in the Gulf of Aden are terrorizing international shipping and jeopardizing the supply of vital food aid to Somalia. The increasing threat at sea combined with a humanitarian disaster on land places the EU in a tough position, to act or not to act. Intensive consultation at national and European level results in EU NAVFOR Operation Atalanta, the first naval mission ever undertaken by the EU. The main challenges were, of course, um, em embracing a, a European Union, the first maritime mission, against a very difficult adversary, and how to bring that together a very long way from Europe and sustain that operation. Uh, through a considerable period of time. One aspect of EU NAVFOR's mandate is to protect vulnerable ships and vessels carrying humanitarian aid from pirate attacks. But with up to 5,000 ships a month transiting the Gulf of Aden and an area of operations one and a half times the size of Europe, this is no easy task. The key to success is teamwork. We work very closely in partnership with NATO, who have a force out there, and the Combined Maritime Force based in Bahrain. It's been the one of the uh, most interesting operations in that it has brought exceptional cooperation. The sort of cooperation I just don't think could happen on land, but has been uh, available to us at sea. With several warships operating together under the EU NAVFO flag, the number of attacks has reduced dramatically. Atalanta is probably the most uh, outstanding success story of CSDP. But fighting pirates at sea is not enough. We have to do something about the root causes. People are becoming pirates not because it's romantic, but it's a good business. So we need to open new perspectives for the country. With tactical success at sea, the next challenge, together with the African Union's mission to Somalia, is to strengthen Somalia's embryonic army to counter the threat of Al-Shabaab, a huge task for the EU military training mission for Somalia. Quand en 2007, l'Union africaine a conçu le concept de la mission en tant que mission de paix pour la Somalie, très peu était ce qui frappait à la porte. Il n'y a eu que l'Union européenne qui y a cru et s'est investi à travers le programme de formation ETM qui nous a formé plus de 3000 combattants somaliens. This is a country that has been without a functioning state for 22 years. So we should not expect that things will be easy. But we have new momentum and energy to move forward. The EU training mission was outside Somalia before. Now they are relocated into Somalia and they are going to train the Somalis inside Somalia. In a region devastated by two decades of civil war, security needs are as pressing as social and economic ones, so the only effective response is a comprehensive approach. It was very obvious we needed a cohesive, coherent approach if we were going to help the Somali people realize their ambitions. Since then, we've brought the full support of the European Union to Somalia and to the wider region. And I want to assure the Somalian people that we will stand with them for the future. What's important to understand is that the European Union's ability to begin to amalgamate the various strengths it has, these are humanitarian, it is developmental, it is now security. This is the Union beginning to give clout to what it claims to be. Building on the successes of EU NAV4 and the training mission to Somalia, in 2012 the EU launches UCAP Nestor, the first capacity building mission with a truly regional approach. 
c'est de permettre à cinq pays de la région de la Corne de l'Afrique de contrôler leur, leur espace maritime de façon à éviter notamment la piraterie. C'est de faire de la législation et puis aussi du maritime, c'est-à-dire développer des gardes-côtes ou des marines qui soient encore une fois en mesure de contrôler cet espace, à les maîtriser. Ça c'est les pistes, ça c'est les différents bateaux qui transitent le long du corridor. Frédéric Pasquier is an experienced French gendarme embedded in the Djiboutian Coast Guard. His task is to help train this incipient force. Ils ont encore besoin de formation, d'équipement, d'entraînement. L'Union européenne peut partager du savoir-faire tout en prenant en compte leurs propres besoins et leur propre façon de travailler. Like the Coast Guard, the Navy is also in strong need of support. Today, the arrival of the Spanish warship Meteoro provides the best platform for a joint Navy Coast Guard diving exercise. Eh, vamos a explicar un poco lo que es el, de qué consta el equipo, el equipo de buceo que tenemos ahora mismo a bordo. Every time when a ship goes to, the, to a jetty or to a pier, we inspect the jetty itself, if there is any suspicious object, and then if the ship is in harbor, we inspect also the hull in order to see if there is any threat to the hull or any damage. Another important task of UCAP Nestor is to help the countries in the Horn of Africa strengthen their laws to be able to fight piracy and other crimes on the high seas, such as illegal fisheries and trafficking. We are working in post-conflict societies and there one of the first priorities is to make police and justice work again. In the aftermath of the Balkan Wars, member states realized the need for the EU to act as a security provider, laying the foundations for Europe's common security and defense policy. CSDP was born out of frustration. Uh, we, we saw that we were not effective enough. At the same time, it's our backyard. And so that was the realization of the, of the mid-90s. And then it gave a very important impulse to the development of a new policy that was then written down in the treaties and implemented as of 2003 in the field. A decade later, the EU's common security and defense policy has a proven track record of success in both military operations and civilian crisis management. The challenge now is to sustain this position in the light of changing threats and shrinking budgets. Si on retrace toutes les opérations depuis une dizaine d'années, on voit bien que les Européens, c'est-à-dire les forces armées des pays européens, sont extrêmement présents. Pour autant, la situation dans laquelle nous sommes maintenant nous oblige d'aller plus loin. If Europe is to reap uh, the full benefit uh, of its uh, common defense and security policy, uh, it's also necessary that Europeans invest uh, sufficiently. Uh, in robust military capabilities. We have our limits in terms of sustainability, in terms of complexity of military operations. That's why we try to improve our capabilities, particularly in the area of uh, air-to-air refueling, of uh, strategic airlift. Als we daarin kunnen bundelen en delen en als we en materieel en mensen en EUBG en deze specifieke niches waar we vroeger tekortkomingen hadden kunnen invullen, dan zijn we een hele grote stap vooruit. We spend 200 billion euros a year on defense in the European Union. So if I turn that into a challenge and an opportunity, I think we really do have to do more now to try and work collectively. Strengthening Europe's military muscle by pooling and sharing key resources may also boost its economy. La défense est indéniablement un moteur de croissance et elle crée en plus des emplois hautement euh, qualifiés. Et donc c'est très souvent le secteur de défense qui est à l'origine d'innovations technologiques qui soutiennent tout un, tout un secteur économique. In maximizing synergies between civilian and military operations in the Horn of Africa, the EU has contributed positively to the stability of a region ravaged by war and poverty. But in the face of increasing security challenges in the world, how will the EU's role as a provider of security evolve in the future? We will be wherever will be needed. CSDP is demand-driven. We engage in countries and regions where we can make a difference. But of course we have to be well prepared to react. 
the potential is there. We just need to make sure that we can use it.